Hello everyone, it's a couple of days later since the boot sale. I picked up some really good things. I have done my research, I have my notes. So we can go through exactly what I got and what I should hope to get for it. So we're gonna kick off with the cheap stuff. You know I love cheap stuff and this was 20 pence and this was 20 pence. And I love a picture, these gold frames sell really well they fit in with a lot of people's decor this is just a little probably a printed off piece of art on some paper or something but if the person doesn't like that art they can just take it out it's a wall hanging and also you can pop out the triangles to pop it on a table it's actually a cute bit of art it's like a little waterfall it's like a little fairy woodland scene so from 20 pence i think i'll list it for 15 take offers it's a cute little piece to get started getting in the christmas spirit this really cute tin i'll wind it up for you it just plays christmas songs it's an fort never mason old biscuit tin from christmas it's empty but someone will Someone will buy that for Christmas, surely. There's been some that have sold for £9. I paid 20 pence. I'll be happy with £9. I'm going to get that listed now because people are doing their organising for Christmas. So that would be perfect for someone to put a gift in or if they've baked their own Christmas biscuits. So not a bad start. We've got a 40 pence spend so far. Altogether, I spent £27-ish. Another really cheap purchase is this lovely glass bowl. It was 50 pence. When I got it home, I did realise it has a little chip just there. It's just off the base. It's not hugely noticeable. You wouldn't tell it was there if it was sat on the table. But it's got absolutely gorgeous controlled bubble design. It's beautiful. So for that, I'm going to pop it on for 15 pounds and see where it goes. I sold that orange controlled bubble ashtray for £15 this week so I should hope for another quick sale for that I only picked up a couple of pieces of jewellery this week but this is fabulous it was a pound I think it was one of the first things I picked up it is absolutely gorgeous and for a pound that is bargain of the day it's got absolutely beautiful turquoise blue enamel interior quite an unusual little snack to close and oh, the flowers are just absolutely gorgeous it's a real quality piece so for a pound I'm gonna aim quite high for this I'm gonna maybe go 40 pounds um, 40 to 50 and see where it goes this is quite an unusual designed for a cloisonne bangle um, and it's really high quality compared to some of the others so yeah we'll aim high 40 pounds and hopefully someone will fall in love like with that like i have because that is beautiful i would keep it but try and not keep too much stuff <laughs> from the same guy for a pound this adorable little bear and inside he has a little bear brooch it's so cute must be like 90s or something with that little flocked velvet bear so for that I'm gonna aim for around 15 pounds it's a cute little vintage gift adorable for a pound I picked up this lovely wooden box I just love the detail it's really gorgeous it's got an embroidered top it's in really good condition cost me a pound and the label on the bottom is Cashes, which is Cashes of coventry and this logo is from the 70s someone's had a go of peeling it off but i'm glad they didn't These caches are relatively collect collectible they specialized in embroidered things so like the embroidered lidded boxes and bookmarks and little pieces of artwork 
So there's only one other box listed, it's a square one and that's listed for around £20. So I might go for £20 and see how that goes. There's probably others of these listed but people probably won't know that they're by caches because most people do peel off labels, don't they? So I have that advantage if someone's looking for the specific brand, there won't be very many of them popping up. It's camping season <laughs> still, even though summer's nearly over and it's absolutely freezing cold, everyone's going camping this year, aren't they? Um, so this is a vintage thermos. I love this colour. I think this is the vacuum jar design. I opened this at the bottom and there's some sort of weird contraption in there, which I presume is the vacuum part. And this is just the regular top with the little seal in there. It's in pretty good condition. I'll get some boiling water in there or something and clean out the inside. There's a lot of these listed in red and white. There's not very many of the blue and white ones, but I should hope to get 10 to 15 pounds. I've had a big one of these before, which sold for 25 pounds on Etsy, I think. So it should be a good seller, especially since everyone's camping or people tend to buy these for props for films. So I did buy one thing for myself. This is so cute. It's a colander. And I needed a new colander and I happened to find one. I think it was a poundish. Beautiful vintage. I love that it has the handle. Enameled. So cute. If I was going to sell this, I should hope to get somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds. There's I couldn't actually find one exactly like this. And it's super cute. So I think that would be a good seller. But we're gonna keep it for now. From the same fella that I picked up those jewellery pieces from, he had this gorgeous piece of artwork. And at first I picked it up and put it back down. I thought, ah, it's probably just a print. But then you look at the back, it's super old. It has some rem remnants of chalk, possibly being in an auction. See some numbers on it. I don't know if you watch Fake or Fortune on BBC One, but that is one of my favourite programmes of all time where they get artwork and they have to prove whether it's by a top artist. <laughs> this isn't, but it is an original watercolour and it's by H. Vane Turner. It's like a really moody, misty sea scene. Sea, sea scene. It's gorgeous. It's like a pier with some yachts. That's really cool. So this fella has sold pieces at auction. I believe he painted around the 1930s and 40s time. Um, one is sold on auction on eBay recently for £20, but I don't sell anything on auction. I think that's far too cheap for this piece. A couple have sold in real life auctions for 40 to 60 pounds. So with this, there's none others listed on eBay, none others up for auction at the moment. So you know what, let's go for 75 pounds, have best offer on and see where we'll go with that. People do love artwork and they like original artwork. And I think someone's going to really fall in love with that. It's very moody. I bought some other artworks here. It's my amazing haggling skills, but I'll show you those at the end because they are my favourites. I picked up this beautiful hand embroidered, it's like a tray, it's got a glass cover, gorgeous woven border and a wooden back. Now this looks to have been handmade, so pretty. For this, I should hope to get 15 to 20 pounds. We'll go for 20 and see where it goes. But I love rescuing pieces like that, that someone's put so much time into making them and they just end up with the car boot. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Now at the start, when we first walked in, I picked up two jewelry boxes and they were only a pound each. I got this one. I've had this one before, probably a month, a month and a half ago, um, and it sold really quickly for £25, I think, somewhere at 20 to £25. So that's good, and it's in quite nice condition. Just needs a little wipe down. And I picked up another one. 
I've had similar to this before as well. There's no markings or makers inside or, inside or on the base. But for one pound, you can't go wrong with a wooden jewelry box, especially with the little stained glass window. Cute little drawers. So again, somewhere 20 to 25 pounds. So that was a really good start. I got this tray purely because it was so heavy. It is so weighty. It's not like a flimsy piece. It's heavy. It's a gorgeous design. It's made by Viners, silver plated, and it actually says alpha plate. So I'll have to have a look at what that means. I presume it just means like a high quality silver plated, but it's gorgeous. It's a real quality piece, like a drinks tray or, you know, if you've got a butler, this is for them for Christmas. <laughs> there is probably three listed at the moment for £40. There's some cheaper ones, but they aren't this gorgeous design. So I might undercut those people and go 35 Sorry, people with this tray. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to take much less than 35 because it is a real quality heavy piece of silver plate. Another tray, soft green, like felty back, rose gold, and the beautiful shiny wood top. This was only a pound. And um, who was it made by? Grosvenor, Rosvenor. I thought this would be worth like 25, 30 pounds, but unfortunately they don't seem to be worth that much, maybe up to 15. However, there aren't very many with the rose gold handles and surround, and rose gold is really in right now. So, um, I'll maybe go 22, 50 with offers. But I really like that, that's a nice retro piece. And I think that's most of my pieces done, apart from my favourites here. You want a £20. You know when you just look at a stall and go, they're expensive. But I love pieces like this, so I was like, you know what, I'll just ask how much they are. He said 20 and there's no way I'm paying £20 for anything. So I said 10 and I stuck to my guns. Um, I heard a, a tip on one of the podcasts about haggling. And uh, if you can make it as awkward as possible, the other person is more likely to go down in price. So literally don't say anything, <laughs> it was the tip. So he said 20 pounds and I was just like, mm. and it felt like I stood there forever, but it was probably only five, 10 seconds. And then he went, oh, okay, yeah, you can have them for 10 pounds. And the lady on the stall next to him was laughing. <laughs> but I'm not really very good at haggling. I find it very awkward, but I did want these and there was no payout way I was going to pay £20. £10 was quite enough for me. So I ended up working out at £2.50 each painting. But I know that I don't really have any trouble selling these. So I should be well in the profit after I've sold only one of them. And they're really good quality pieces, which I think will shift really quickly. So that's why I spent £10. And I know some of you are laughing because £2.50 for something is nothing to you. And I know people spend a lot of money on stuff. But it kills me inside to spend, to spend more than two pounds. And I know that's crazy. But I find it too much pressure to buy a really expensive things and then have, have them sitting on shelves, not selling. So I like to buy cheap stuff. If it doesn't sell, no worries. If it does sell, you're well in the profit. And that's what I like about it. But I probably have that luxury because I'm, you know, I'm just part-time and this just supplements my main income so I can have a bit of fun with it um, which is probably different if you're full-time and you rely on the money but for me this is fun keeps my brain happy so this is the first one it's gorgeous I would want to keep all of these because they're absolutely beautiful but we're gonna have to part with them so I got four oil paintings there's three different artists. I originally thought they were all the same. I was just gonna sell them as one bundle and I may still do that. But the more when I'm leaning towards splitting them by artist. So this one is signed May. It's like a still life of some grapes and a bowl. It's beautiful. I love these like dark colored 
oil paintings. I think they're absolutely amazing. The frame is gorgeous and chunky. It's beautiful. And these actually had price tags of £16.50 on the back from whoever had tried to sell them before. Um, but I think I can get more than that, and I usually do. So I've had a set of three similar. There weren't any many were as good quality of these that I sold for £40. So even if I sold all four of them for £40, which I think would be seriously undervaluing them, I'm still going to get my money back, which is why I was happy to spend the tenner. So this is signed May. Beautiful. They're all in the same frame, so I don't know whether they've been owned by the same person or sold by the same dealer originally. Gorgeous. I can't find May particularly on eBay or anywhere else. I imagine it maybe they were students from an art school or something or because this is a very similar subject but by a different artist. But regardless, I should hope to get around 35 to 40 pounds for this. You saw the other the other week I sold a tiny little circle one of a little flower oil painting. It wasn't amazing quality. The frame was quite light and cheap and I got 15 pounds for that. So that's how well pieces like this can sell. So I think 35 to 40 is a reasonable price. I'm going to pop it on for 40. If it doesn't get any interest, I can always lower the price or I can pair it up with another one that I've got there. So that's the plan so far. These. I can't work out the signature. I thought it was like vein or bear or something, but nothing comes up when I search it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a picture, a close up picture, and put it in. Because some people are really good at reading the old handwriting, and I'm not at all. So if you know what that said, hit me up in the comments. I would much appreciate it. But these are two very similar subjects. Again, they've both got the grapes, a pear, a peach, looks like a little peachy bum, and an apple. These are stunning. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? They're just so ornate. Now you can see the old price tag, 16.50 on both of them. So yeah, I'm gonna sell these as a pair by the same artist, same kind of subject. They look absolutely beautiful on somebody's wall. And I'm gonna aim high, I'm gonna go 80 pound, 80 to 100. Absolutely stunning. Even if I can't work out who the artist is, the fact that they're both original signed oil paintings in beautiful frames will help me out. And lastly, is my absolute favourite one. It's signed Cox, which could be Robert Cox. Um, I just did a little bit of research and I couldn't find his, any of his which were specifically signed, just Cox. Um, but I just did a little scroll of halfway down the page, so we'll have a look. But it looks very similar to how he signs Cox. <laughs> how he signs Cox? Oh my God. How he signs his name Cox. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, the most common is Robert Cox. I've seen R. Cox. I haven't seen <laughs> I haven't seen Cox on its own, um, but that doesn't mean it's not him. It looks very, very much like his style of handwriting, um, and this is absolutely beautiful. If it is a Robert Cox, they go for anywhere up to one hundred and fifty pounds. Normally, for the slightly bigger ones, but I think this color scheme is absolutely gorgeous. If it is him, I should hope to get around £80, I should think. If it isn't, as I say, purely for the signed oil painting aspect, I would hope still to get around £50 for that because it's beautiful. It's all sorts of beautiful shades of green. It's absolutely stunning. I want to keep this, but I can't keep anything and I have too many pieces of artwork already. I allowed myself the colander. <laughs> so yeah, this will be going for sale. Uh, oh, it's gorgeous. Mm, I wanna keep it. 
I wish I could paint. Alas, I can only buy junk and sell it sometimes. <laughs> so yes, they were my favourite buys of this week. And even selling just one of them, I should get my money back and uh, make my money for the whole of everything that I bought today, which is fantastic. So that was it. I'm sorry for my terrible lighting situation. Every time I do that, the sun comes through. But that's where the sun is on my house. That's the front of my house. And in the afternoon, the sun just comes right over near my windows. If I close the windows, it's too dark. I have an old Victorian house, it's dark. So that's it for today's car boot sale video. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I picked up and learned a little bit from the research general that I did. Keep an eye on the what sold videos as usual to see what things have sold quickly. And I'll see you in the next video which will be the haul video from Bank Holiday Monday car boot sale. I didn't film that car boot sale because I was absolutely knackered and also it was on and off rain and there was only about two or three rows at the car boot sale so I didn't expect to pick anything up honestly. But as it turns out typically I did manage to fill a bag full of stuff so I will just film that haul for you and show you what I picked up in case you are interested in that so sorry there won't be any car boot sale footage but I will just go through what I got and that's it that'll probably be the next video so I'll see you there bye guys